But we're now joined by Neelkan Mishra of Axis Bank uh, to talk about what you can expect from the budget, whether to expect anything at all. Neelkan, uh, good morning and thanks for joining in. You know, the common view is that the government has A, RBI's big dividend and B, healthy tax collection. So it is sitting on a bonanza which it can deploy meaningfully in a sector of its choice. Do you agree and does the math add up? The math adds up and uh, I think both of these have to be dealt with separately or differently. So the RBI dividend, while I mean, I also think that the dividend in FY26 also could actually be well above one and a half lakh crores, but that's not how the government is likely to think and it will treat and it should treat the excess RBI dividend as a one-off. It is not something that can be assumed to be a steady state. So therefore it cannot be spent on policies which are going to last many years. And therefore, my uh, expectation is that some part of it will be spent in bringing down the fiscal deficit, so 5.1 going down to 4.9, wherein the, the 70 basis points of consolidation which the government thought was prudent that the economy could withstand it in, uh, in January, uh, it will persist with that and given that a 524 deficit came 20 basis points lower than in the revised estimate, it is possible that they will bring it down by 20 basis points. I think the rest of it, uh, while it would be tempting to use it for further consolidation, it would be, uh, it, if you do consolidate or, or the consolidation is, uh, is very aggressive, it can actually slow the economy down and therefore it would make sense to have uh, the money spent. And I think the most prudent way to spend it would be to increase the, the interest-free loans that the government is offering to state governments should they want to do CAPEX. And uh, so that is how a large part of this, uh, the one-off bonanza from the RBI dividend can actually is likely to be spent. There is also going to be some additional income that may come in in the, in the budget versus the vote on account which can be perceived to be more steady state in the sense that another maybe 30,000 crores. And that amount can actually be spent on things like Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen where the government is planning to ramp it up meaningfully uh, or, or maybe some you know, tax uh, adjustments that may be made. But those are, the number actually is going to be much smaller than the one and a half lakh crores of extra money that the government has to take decisions on. Okay, Grameen Yojana, you said. Now, from that comes this question. Which sectors, in your opinion, are going to see the biggest push? The common expectation, of course, is that infrastructure and capex uh, will get a boost. But you tell me. I think the priorities of the government would remain the same. Remember that the government is, is because of the interventions that were necessary during COVID, is saddled with a lot of debt. So the debt to GDP at a general government level is still above 80% and therefore the economy still needs to uh, be very careful on how government monies are spent and I think the priority will remain things which have much higher fiscal multipliers and that means more spending on infrastructure. Though given that uh, the government in the central government's mandate is restricted to national highways, railways, airports, uh, major ports uh, and and telecom, the uh, the the ability to spend more on some of these areas outside of railways is actually fairly limited, and therefore the the expectation I have is that they will actually hand it over to state governments, where the state government can spend on a whole range of issues on the capex side. So that I think will continue to be the priority of the government. Uh, Neelkan, will we see a big vision being outlined? Because this is the first budget of uh, NDA 3. Uh, will we see something laid out for the next five years? The president's uh, speech, which, uh, uh, you know, as you know, when the Lok Sabha starts, the president addresses the, the joint session of parliament, and that, in a way, lays out the intentions of the cabinet. I mean, the president speaks on behalf of the government. And... Uh, there, the message was very clear that the vision for the next five years, to, to at least the broad vision, because I don't think there's been enough time to, to flesh out all the details, but the broad direction 
is something that will definitely come out in the budget speech. So, so it's very important to look at the event of the budget uh, into two parts. The first is the fiscal arithmetic, we just discussed that. And the second is the speech itself, which actually gives a sign signal to the economy and the various participants in the economy uh, of the broad intentions of the government. And I do think that those will be fleshed out to some extent in, in the budget speech. Okay, but I think the big thing on everyone's mind is capital gains taxation, right, on stocks. What is your view? Will any change whatsoever be a huge issue for foreign investors? So there is the issue of the foreign investors, which is where um, I think the, so the fact that there are very high capital gains, or even if the capital gains tax on equities was to be raised, uh, it would definitely uh, make India among the higher taxed countries and jurisdictions uh, on the equity capital gain side. Uh, but then there is the domestic uh, you know, uh, allocation and how uh, the differentials in tax rates are distorting the flows into certain types of assets. And that is, I think, the challenge in front of the government, that you are seeing uh, uh, perhaps excessive flows into uh, equity capital markets and uh, you are uh, also not seeing, at least so far, uh, a lot of that going into what I would call uh, primary investment. So, so uh, a large part of the supply response that is coming, you know, there was a strong demand for equities, uh, supply was limited, so the prices went up. This is how markets work, so supply is now responding. But a lot of that supply is actually off of a sale, basically, promoters or venture capitalists or even multinationals uh, selling off uh, their stake. Uh, there's nothing wrong in that. In fact, the bigger it turns the book, the, the more their commitment to the Indian market. And so all, all of that in the long term is good. But in the near term, uh, maybe the economy could be better served by having a slightly higher allocation to maybe the bonds, uh, where uh, lower bond deals could actually bring down cost of borrowing. So I think those are the variables that the government uh, will be considering before they uh, take a decision on this. So the decision will be less influenced by how foreign investors may respond, but more about how domestic asset allocation decisions are getting distorted by the tax structure in India. Okay, so that's on capital gains tax, but uh, eventually the market is going to look beyond the budget, right? And at this point in time, looks like there is some amount of time-wise correction that the market is staring at. What's your view on that? So I would say that uh, that, and I'm this, I've, I've been saying this for the last ten years that the market should generally ignore the budget because the budget is a statement of accounts uh, of the central government. Uh, there are far more interesting things that happen in state budgets, for example, and this is the way the government is also now signalling to the markets that uh, a lot of the policy decisions get taken outside the budget cycle. This is very different from what used to happen till about 15, 20 years back. So uh, I think it's a lot less important for the market than it was 25, 30 years back. Uh, so the overall market, though, I think the, the point that we need to keep in mind is that the acceleration in growth expectations. Uh, remember that in Jan 23, so one and a half years back, uh, the expectations on India's GDP growth were much weaker. In fact, uh, very famously, the U.S. is... Uh, the fact that there was no recession or there hasn't been a recession so far is something that has been used to justify why the U.S. stock market has done so much better. Well, guess what? I mean, our FY25 GDP numbers have been upgraded by more than three percent points in real terms and higher in nominal terms uh, in the last one and a half year. So what we have to keep in mind is that the, the, uh, those upgrades are most likely now behind us. I think the, uh, the economy is growing at seven percent plus, but I doubt that it is currently in a position, given what's happening globally, to grow at a much higher pace, faster pace than that. So, uh, as that happens, I think the market's uh, euphoria, I think, will have to be tempered a bit because the continuous positive surprises that we have become used to uh, may not happen anymore. Nilkan, thank you very much uh, for that. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> look forward to speaking with you once the budget is out and uh, we have the actual numbers uh, with us. Uh, so, great speaking as